Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off the dishwasher's water supply underneath the sink. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the GE dishwasher user interface board. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new user interface board. The user interface board tells the dishwasher what cycle you selected and when you start the dishwasher. The manager will be changing it out, so if it's gone bad and it's not allowing you to select the cycle or start the dishwasher. In order to change the part, we have to pull the dishwasher out of the cabinet. First thing we're going to do is go underneath the sink and disconnect the lines. Now that we're underneath the cabinets, you want to make sure that the dishwasher is still unplugged and you may want to throw a towel down. When we take off the fill line and the drain hose, there's going to be some water that comes out. First, we're going to disconnect the fill line. It's connected right here to the hot water valve. You want to make sure the water valve is off. And then we're going to use our 5 8 inch wrench to loosen up the hose. Once you have it broke free, you can just reach in and unscrew it by hand. Once you have it off, you can just set it down and then we can take off the drain hose. To take the drain hose off, you just want to follow it up to wherever it goes. It may go to the garbage disposal. Ours goes up to the air gap. Once you locate the end of it, we're going to take a 5 16 nut driver and loosen up the clamp. Once you have the clamp loose, you can pull it free and set it down. Now that we have the lines disconnected, we're going to open up the dishwasher door and use the Phillips screwdriver to take out the screws that hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Now that we have the screws out, we're going to lift up on the door and use it to carefully pull the dishwasher out a little bit. Once you have it out, we can grab the frame and we're going to pull it out about halfway. We're not going to pull it out all the way. Now we're going to use the quarter inch nut driver to take off the screws that hold on the access panel. Once you have the screws out, we can pull the access panel and the sound insulation out and set it aside. Now that we have the access panel and the insulation out of the way, we can disconnect the wiring harness. There's a little locking tab right here, you just have to press on to release it. And we're going to follow it up and there's a little clip that hooks it to the tub. We're just going to unhook it from there. Now we can release the door cables. There's one on each side. They both come off the same way. All you have to do is grab the end here and lift it off the hinge. And then they make a little cable holder right below it that you can just hook it into and let go. That way it doesn't spring back and unhook the spring. Now we can do the door cable on the other side. It comes off the same way. Now that we have everything disconnected, we can take the door off. We're just going to open it up a little bit and you want to lift up on it so the pins come out of the hinge. Don't open it too far, otherwise they won't come out. Just enough to get them out. Once you have it free, you can pull it off the dishwasher. Now that you have the door off, we're going to set it on a table with a towel down so you don't scratch it or damage it. First thing we're going to do is take the vent cover off. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver just to break it free. Just want to get it on the tab right there and just tap it. Once you have it free, you can just unscrew it, take it off and set it aside. Now we're at the bottom of the door. There's two screws on each side that we have to remove in order to separate the two panels. We're going to use a quarter inch nut driver to take them out. Now we're going to use the Torque 25 driver to remove the two screws down by the hinge. There's two on this side and two on the other side.
Now we're going to turn the door over so we can take the front panel off. Just want to carefully turn it over, set it on the table. Once you have it off, we're going to separate the two sides. You have to pull down on the outer door to separate it from the inner door. Once you have it free, you can pull it off and set it aside. Now that we have the front panel off, we have access to the user interface board. It's mounted up here at the top of the door. We're going to remove the wiring harnesses first. We're going to use a small flathead screwdriver to press on the release tabs and pull the wiring harnesses out. Then we can use the quarter inch nut driver to remove the four screws that hold the board in. Once you have the four screws out, we're just going to lift the vent up and move it out of the way a little bit. Once you have the vent out of the way, we can pull this housing out that holds the board. All you have to do is pull down on it. Once you have it out, you can pull it off the door. Now that we have the assembly out, you have to take the user interface board out of it. There's four locking tabs on each side that hold this plastic cover on with the buttons. We're going to use a putty knife and a small screwdriver to release them. We're going to press on the tab with a small flathead screwdriver to get it to release. And then we're going to stick the putty knife in there to hold it open so it doesn't snap back closed. Just carefully stick the putty knife between the gray plastic and the clear plastic and then slowly work your way down. Sometimes you can flex the putty knife and the next one will pop off. If it doesn't, you'll have to just give it some pressure with the small flathead screwdriver again. Once you have them all off, you can pull the button assembly off, and then we can lift the user interface board out of the bracket. It's not held in by anything, so all you have to do is push on it from the back side and lift up on it and separate the two pieces. Here's the old user interface board next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. Looks like they made this user interface board work on a couple different models. So you're going to have to look at the description and look on the back for the jumper setting table and look for your model number to find out what personality you need. Our dishwasher model number is GDT695, so we're going to have to set our board up for personality number 11. When you get it from the manufacturer, the jumpers are mounted on the upper pins, so we're going to have to move them so they match personality 11. So if you look at the paper, Personality 11, we're going to have to move 8, 2, and 1 to the center, and number 4 all the way down to the bottom. When you look at the board at the base of the pin block, you can see the numbers 8, 4, 2, and 1. That's the same as the diagram. So we're going to use a needle nose pliers to just move the jumper wires so it matches the diagram. So the first one is number 8, which we're going to put down onto both the pins. And then four goes mounted down onto the lower pin only. And then two and one are going to be just like eight. Just move it down into the center so they're on both pins.
Once you have them in place, you want to press down on them to make sure they're secure and seated all the way. Once you have them set, we can put the board into the dishwasher. To put the new user interface into the bracket, we're just going to line it up and set it into place. It can only go in one way, so just carefully set it down into place, but make sure it sits down even so you can see the little square holes on each side where the top is going to snap in. Once you have it in place, we can grab the button assembly and just carefully line it up and snap it on. Once you have it back together, we can put the assembly back into the control panel. To put the assembly in, you just want to line it up and turn it over. Slide it into place, make sure the screw holes line up. Once you have it in place, we're going to lift the blower assembly back up and set it in place. Once you have the blower in place, we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the four screws that hold the assembly in. Now we can reconnect the wiring harnesses. All I have to do is plug them in so they lock into place. Once you have those connected, you can put the door back together. To put the outer door on, when you set it in place, you want to make sure that these tabs right here go into the slots on the door. And then you also want to make sure that the tabs here on the top of the panel go underneath the control panel. Once you have it in, you can pull up on it to push it into the console. Now they have the door put back together, we're going to carefully turn it over. And we're going to use the Torque 25 driver to put in the screws on the side. Once you have these in, we can do the ones on the other side. Now we can use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the screws that hold the bottom of the door together. There are two different types down there. If you have mixed them up, you want to make sure that the fine thread goes on the bottom here. Now we can put the vent cover back on. To put it in, you just have to line it up and screw it in. Once you get it snug, you just want to take the flathead screwdriver and tap it a little bit so it's nice and tight so you can get a leak. Now that we have the door put back together, we can put it back on the dishwasher. To put the door back on, all you have to do is Line up the hinges and set the pins in there. Now that we have the door back on, we can hook up the door cables. All you have to do is stretch them out and hook them over the hinge. Once you have this side on, you can do the other one. Now we can reconnect the wiring harness underneath. We're going to reach in and hook it over the hook so it's held in place. Once you have it in place, you can grab the plug, plug it into the control board. Just want to make sure you plug it in so you get a good connection. It snaps in.
Now that we have the wiring harness hooked up, we can put the insulation back in. Remember, you want to put the thick part back in first, and this part wraps up inside the door. Once you have it in place, we can set the access panel in and use the quarter inch nut driver to put in the screws. Now we have to reach underneath and put the line through the cabinets. We want to push the dishwasher in about halfway. Then we can go underneath the sink and pull on the lines to make sure they're not caught on anything. Then we can push the dishwasher in the rest of the way. Now we can reconnect the drain hose to the air gap. Once you have it pushed up into place, we're going to use our 5 16 inch nut driver to tighten down the clamp. Once you have the drain line hooked up, we can hook up the water line. All you have to do is get it started by hand. Once you have it snug, we can reach in with our 5 8 inch wrench to tighten it down so it doesn't leak. Now that we have the lines reconnected underneath the sink, we're going to open up the dishwasher door and use the Phillips screwdriver to put in the screws to hold the dishwasher to the countertop. Now that we have the screws in, we can close the dishwasher door, then we can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.